So first of all, we are really excited to, let's say, be part of this town hall and to have, let's say, the opportunity to show what we have developed, let's say, at Mac Z when it comes to, let's say, access management. Um, first of all, who are we, or let's say, who are we representing? So today I have, let's say, the pleasure to represent MediaMark Saturn. So MediaMark Saturn, if you're from Europe, or let's say specifically from Germany, uh, you will definitely know us. But let's say outside of, let's say, Europe, um, to give you some, some quick facts. So uh, MediaMark Saturn is uh, Europe's consumer electronics retailer number one, meaning we are, let's say, the biggest and also obviously the best one. So we're operating in 13 different countries and uh, having there roughly 1,000 stores. Uh, 50,000 employees make sure that our customers have the best, let's say, experience when buying consumer electronics. Um, we are generating roughly 22 billion euros of sales, and we are also, let's say, an omnichannel retailer, meaning we have, let's say, also a big online shop, which generates over 5 billion euros of sales. Now, let me also introduce ourselves. Uh, we have Sebastian, we have Pasha, we have Chalet, we have Hugo, who are, let's say, working uh, mostly, let's say, on the backend side. Um, let's say on data hub, but also let's say different services which we develop for media etc. Uh, then we have Diego and Ahmad who are let's say more on the front end side, uh, but are also let's say great designers. Uh, Thorsten is our data scientist who is, for example, doing um, uh, let's say classification topics, for example, identifying let's say building algor algorithms to let's say identify PI information or let's say utilizing LLMs to give additional let's say context to our metadata. Now, let's say some key facts about how we're doing analytics, uh, let's say, in our analytics platform at MediaMax, et cetera. So first of all, we are in a transitioning phase. So we have, let's say, used um, the concept of data mesh to really scale up our infrastructure, our, let's say, data platform, where we have, let's say, roughly 8 petabyte of data. Uh, roughly 31 domains, including countries, are utilizing our platform and generating about 8 million queries on average per month. Um, but let's say to tackle governance challenges, but also inter interoperability between different uh, domains, uh, we are let's say now transitioning to a hub and spoke approach. On the tooling side, um, we are utilizing Google Cloud and mainly BigQuery, uh, where we are doing let's say batch processing, but also let's say a lot of real-time processing of data. On the BI tool side, there is uh, let's say a lot, but uh, we are also there let's say partnering mainly with Google. But we also have, let's say, other applications like Power BI or Tableau uh, or Click in our, let's say, tooling landscape. Now the question, why Data Hub, uh, why open source? So first of all, it aligns really good with our vision statement. So what we want to, let's say, offer to our, let's say, stakeholders, our customers uh, within the data area is really, let's say, flexibility and the ability to customize, um, let's say, solutions for them. Uh, this is, let's say, a big topic. Then, obviously, it's open source, it's come with less costs, and the good thing also no license management, meaning we have, let's say, more time to focus on the cool things and also not having, let's say, a vendor login. But why specifically Data Hub? So first of all, it has a great community. We love it. We were really, let's say, looking into, uh, let's say, when we decided for, for Data Hub, how active the community is, let's say, how it evolving it is, and uh, how it follows, basically, industry trends and best practices. So we love it, uh, great community. Really glad also to let's say be part of it, um, but we also let's say basically looked into things. Okay, what is maybe data are lacking? So where do we need let's say to customize? And one of the things is access management. So why do we have let's say an own access management solution? First of all, we believe the customer journey. Let's say from really let's say exploring, understanding, and then finally getting access to data should have let's say one entry point. And the next thing is basically also we want to enable our business data owners to make actionable decisions, meaning, let's say, the least effort as possible, meaning by basically clicking on one uh, button, the access should be granted. Uh, the next thing is really, let's say, granular and compliant access control, meaning we want to give our data owners, depending on the, let's say, the complexity or, let's say, the sensitivity of data, also, let's say, all the tooling that they need to really steer the data and say the data access management. With that being said, um, I would like to hand over to my colleague, uh, Chalet, uh, to basically uh, introduce the next steps with you. Chalet, please go ahead. Thanks, Dieter. Uh, could you keep the sharing for probably one minute more? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Yeah, thanks, because I can just continue with those key points, which will be right. really nice. 
Yeah, so hello everyone, here's Shirley. Super excited to be here today together with my team and also with the lovely Acro data team. So we have this chance to demonstrate our design and implementation of our access management feature. So yes, as Dieter already mentioned, this is designed for our organizational usage, but across all these design phases, we try to keep everything as general as possible. And we also add up a, a bunch of highlights based on our core design, for example. We basically focus on life cycle status management, which means all the data access records will be kept in the data hub system. They have their own statuses. So here I also would like to thank David for showing the third PR, which I proposed to the community, which is basically the core code of our, our mm -hmm. feature. And yes, and all these implementation are around that core code. Of course, people generally understand access yeah. management in a very simple way, who, who manages this data set and someone wants to access the data and the owner who is respon responsible for managing the access will give him the access. So this, as it sounds very simple, but we also provide advanced mechanism, for example, for the fine grained access control. And for we also have a component like a global data access dashboard where the data owners can use that to manage, to have a very good overview above all these data access ever created in the system. And also, as I mentioned, this design of the feature is pretty general and it's open for flexible integration. For example, as David also mentioned, um, there's a big pos possibilities to use data, the Data Hub action framework to implement different action processes to capture the events, status, changes of the data access records and initiate processes to do, for example, notification, to do provisioning of the permissions in the platform, so on and so forth. So with that being said, I would like to already start showing how it looks like from the data owner perspective. So please, Dieter, let me continue. Thank you. All right. I hope you can now see my data hub screen. We sure yes. can. Lovely. So great. So here is a typical view of the data set page, which basically every one of us has been already familiar with. So from this moment, I assume myself to be a data owner, which means I'm adding myself with particular owner type. Now we see that this button appears which allows me to create an access configuration on this data set. So as soon as there's a configuration created, this data set will be ready for data consumers in, within this organization to make requests to, to get accesses. Of course, this will go through this approval process. But of course, we also implemented an um, even an advanced mechanism for fine-grained access control and very particularly in our case is the column and row level security. So what does column level security mean? It means that if you have already shared the access of the data, data set to some data consumer, you still want to keep some column content hidden. For example, they probably are PII data or some confidential data from your organization. So for example, here we assume this few tables, this few columns are PII and I want to enable one of them to be column protected. Great, and beyond that, we also have the row level security, which means for different data consumers, you probably don't want to share the whole set of the content of the table. You only want them to access part, a subset of, the, of all the rows. This can be particularly useful if you are in an organ international organization and your data set contains data from different countries and data consumers from different countries should be able to only access the data which are generated for their country. I think this is good for governance in an organ international organization. And here in this case, we're trying to then add role level protection for the country name column. Yes, which makes sense as a good example. Great. Then after security is being set, which is optional, you can still keep it simple. 
And we also have this um, approval workflow configuration, which says as a data owner, you probably want to manually approve every upcoming request to data, or you can set it automatic. For now, it's simple, but in the future, we will add more rule-based determination and here to automatically decide if a request matches certain condition, it will be automatically approved. But keeping it manual for now, and we also allow this configuration of notification, which means the events, for example, who has created an access request or who has probably changed or updated their existing request, this will generate events. And this event will be transformed into notification, probably by email or Slack message or whatever, and will be sent to a particular type of the owners. The thing is that not probably every owner wants to be bothered with these messages, events. So for example, in this case, I'm a data engineer, I'm responsible for managing this. I can select myself, the type for myself, and not all of them. All right, then this is the summary step. I can review what I did. And after I click done, then yes, the access configuration has been created and this data set is ready to be requested for access. And now I will invite my colleague Diego to demonstrate the user experience from the data consumer side. Diego, please. Thank you so much, Suley, and hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be today here and present what we have achieved during the last year. I will demonstrate uh, the process from now on. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay, all right. So now that Soleil has configured this object to be requested, I can access requests by clicking this option under the same button. The unique difference is that I'm, the, I'm not the owner of these objects, so I can request access for it. <clears throat> the first thing that I need to provide is the principal ID. So I'm gonna use this one already prepared. Okay, next I need to provide the purpose of my access so that the owner can make informed decisions. So ideally I should provide as many information as I can. Okay, right. In the next step, given that the owner has set uh, security for some columns, I need to provide some um, customization in order to uh, customize my access request. So uh, in the first step, we are gonna see the uh, co columns protected on the column level protection. And even though it's uh, protected, I can still request access for it by clicking this option. However, for this demo, I'm, not, I'm gonna leave it as it is so we can see how it looks at the end. The next section is the role level uh, area. So in, in this section, I need to provide the specific values for each row level protected column. I can request access for all of the values by clicking this option, but I can also request access for individual uh, values. So I'm gonna choose Germany as an option and I'm gonna continue. Okay, all right. Uh, in this step, I can confirm my, my choices. I can go back and modify anything if needed. But for now, I will continue and I'm gonna create my access request. All right, the access request has been created. I can see, or uh, I can follow you up uh, by clicking here. And let me introduce the data access management dashboard. I will make a pause here on my access request process and explain a little bit the data access management dashboard. We can see uh, in the left side, uh, the navigation area where I can jump between uh, the other access requests that has been created. As you can see, we uh, have aggregated all of them by status so that I can find them easily. Uh, and also uh, in the top area, we can filter it out by uh, managed by me or created by me, meaning that I can be a owner of certain data sets, but I can also be a requester for other ones. So <clears throat> that being said, in the uh, right side, we can find also the detail of the uh, current access request, the selected one. Um, 
And in this area, well, uh, this is also divided in three sections. Let's say uh, the, uh, in the top area, we can find the uh, title of this object. And also we can find the actions that allow me to change the status of this access request. We are gonna see how it works in a few minutes. We can also find here uh, all of the information tied by the owner. Uh, and in the left side, sorry, in the right side, we can also find other uh, useful components. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, so I, I'm gonna switch my browser uh, to another browser because maybe you are wondering how it looks Sorry, before of that, I'm gonna make a change over my access request to see how it works. So I'm gonna add just one country. <clears throat> All right, so as you can see, my access request has been uh, updated. Now a new value has come. And also you can see in the activity history that the change has been made, a change has been made by me. Now we are gonna see how it looks when it's granted. So for that, I'm gonna uh, switch to another browser where I have login with my uh, owner account. So I have the same preview, but let me give me a second. I'm gonna copy this access request link. Okay, um, now uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I am an owner right now in this section. So, oh, sorry something has happened. Give me a second, please. Oh, probably I'm not the owner of this access request, uh, of this object, give me, add me. Okay, sorry for that. Hmm. Can you add me, Soleil, please? <laughs> yes, let me try to add yourself. Thank you so much. So it's your customer. Okay, cool. Try again. Thank you. Okay, now I'm an owner of this uh, object. So the action should change here. Okay, here we have. So now that because I'm the owner, I can reject this request, request changes if it's needed or grant the access. I'm gonna grant the access and see how it goes. So now, as you can see, we are being informed by the via uh, status messages, what is happening under the hood. And in the activity history, we can also see what has happened. So the first thing that has happened is that the owner has approved my access request. And two seconds ago uh, later, uh, the system has provisioned the, the access, right? So coming back to my uh, customer session, let's see how it, how it looks at the end. So <clears throat> the customer see the same information, the same uh, history, but now I'm gonna query this object to see the final result. So let's me query. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> since we have uh, left outlet text has a protected column. Now we can see that the outlet text column has been uh, hidden by nullifying their values. And also uh, we have selected Switzerland and Germany as a row uh, values. So let me see the country text. Okay, here you have. So we only get uh, records from uh, that contains Switzerland and Germany. And yeah. That's all. Thank you so much.